Hello everyone, and welcome to my live stream again. Now that the mic is on, we can get started. I've been on vacation for the last couple of weeks, that's why you haven't seen anything, but I'm glad to be back. Today, I'm starting off a stream using the BIAS system. BIAS stands for Brass Instrument Analysis System. It uh, was developed in Vienna and is used by many horn makers to test their instruments, make sure that they're working well, and to develop new instruments, make sure that they're in tune, make sure that they have good response, and to make sure that everything slots really well. I know this is something that most of you have never heard of, so that's why I thought it would be interesting to show it off in a live stream. The system consists of hardware and software. The hardware portion is this head here. It contains um, very high quality uh, microphones and speakers. So the speakers send a wave through the instrument and the speakers record the feedback. And through that, it can model the instrument and uh, measure its intonation, um, its impedance, its pulse response, and more. So the way it works, you put a mouthpiece into the device. I know it's hard to see, but there is a mouthpiece in there. I like to use my Varus PX in the uh, my Varus PF in the machine, uh, just because it's a very middle of the road mouthpiece. And when testing the instruments, I can get an exact um, match for what I'm using to um, uh, test the instruments by playing. However, I've noticed that different mouthpieces don't really make much of a difference um, in the acoustic response of the horn. The main difference I've noticed is that the deeper a mouthpiece is, so the more volume the cup has, the lower the pitch of the horn will be. The shallower the cup is, the less volume it has, the sharper the horn will be. But those aren't consequential because they can just be balanced out by a quick pull or push of the main slide. And just checking here to make sure everything's still okay. Okay, we're good. Um, other instruments, you just put the head into the instrument and just let it go and it tests the instrument. With French horn, we have the added complication of the fact that it can't get a good measurement without your hand in the bell. Now, sadly, that makes things not quite as consistent as measurements would be on other instruments because the player's hand position makes a difference. Though I would argue that although there are many different hand positions out there, there aren't many that will give the best result. And that's the first thing I'm gonna demonstrate with the, with the bias system today. So I've made some measurements of this horn. This is a Finca Westphalia that we've recently um, gotten into the shop. An excellent horn. If you've been look, we haven't had it for a few months, so if you've been on the lookout for a great handmade horn in the mid six thousand dollar range, I would uh, call us and check it out. But I made some um, some tests before the live stream with the Finca Westphalia, and. Uh, I use the correct hand position. So what I would call a correct hand position is fingers together, fairly straight, and deep into the bell. Now I'm going to see what happens to the intonation if I move the hand out and cover down a little bit. So for many customers who come into the shop and many... Um, students who just start uh, taking lessons with me, I've noticed that there is a tendency to keep the hand too far out of the bell and to cover down. So I'm gonna make a quick test and we'll see what that does. So switching to 
of the bias screen here. So the software is very powerful. It's not the most visually appealing software in the world, but that doesn't matter. I've actually noticed with scientific software, the uglier it is, the more powerful it is. It means they spent a lot more time on the underpinnings of the software than they did on the look of it. And we have the measurements that I took earlier of the Finca Westphalia. I'm going to take a quick measurement here on F open valve. And you'll see, once I trigger this, I have, I'll have three seconds to get the horn up into position, get my hand into the bell, and it will take the measurement. We're only going to do F open for now. I'm going to record that measurement here. And you'll see we now have two measurements to choose from. Let's take a look at the intonation chart. So here we have the intonation from my hand being deep into the bell. Um, the notes do correspond to uh, pitches in F, so this is how we would read it. So F at the bottom of the staff, E, and so on. Um, now you may, if you've never seen one of these charts before, you may be shocked that no horn is perfectly in tune. No horn is perfectly in tune. Um, and of course, you'll see all of the tendencies. For example, E, open E is always flat. It really just depends on what varying degree it is flat. If I do a measurement and E is sharp, then we know something is very wrong. Um, but most people are used to that being flat. However, I this is exactly why I use um, two, uh, trigger two or uh, two on the B flat horn whenever I can on that note because I know open F is going to be flat and I definitely don't tune on that note in the orchestra on open F horn. I only tune on uh, the second B flat valve. Uh, this here, it's a, usually that's a little sharp on this horn. It's a little flat. Five cents flat, nothing to be too concerned about, and so on. Now let me put this measurement on top. So we see it's changed things a bit. Number one, it made the horn flatter. We can see the reference frequency there. Uh, you may be curious to know why it's not 440. I have found that most, most advanced players will have their horns tuned a little high so the slides are pushed farther in than normal. Um, and um, less advanced players will usually be the opposite. The, the slides are pulled out a little bit more because they tend to play towards the top of the pitch. But I'm sure that's not news to any private teachers out there. Now let's take a look at the, imp the impedance. So this impedance chart here, each one of these peaks matches up with, with partials. So if I want to find um, middle C, so I'm looking for, I'm looking here, I'm dragging the line, I'm looking here for where it lines up. So obviously that's the, that we don't need to worry about. Um, 
And then there's the, the fundamental. So here we go. That's middle C. But one thing I want you to notice is that all of these peaks are very, very narrow. And the peak itself represents the amount of energy that is let through on each of those partials. So in general, the higher the peak is, the slottier that note will feel. And the, um, the more energy you'll get out of it. For example, A great way to find these peaks is through an exercise, um, a harmonic series exercise. Uh, some of you may know it as PATH if you've done any lessons with Bill Vermeulen. So each of those snaps that you hear are the horn, uh, the sound of the horn wanting to align to the peaks that you see here on the screen. But notice how narrow they are. When you're not exactly in tune, if I just pull this over four cents, you can see how much energy drops off. If I pull it over a little bit more, now you can see, so if you're playing a little sharp, you're getting this much energy out of the horn instead of this much energy. So in tune on this note is roughly, let me zoom in a little bit. So in tune on this horn is, sorry, not on this horn, but on this note, it's 10 cents sharp. So if I go over another 10 cents. So if I'm 10 cents sharp, you can see I'm getting this much less energy than the peak. 15 cents, I'm getting this much less energy than the peak. And that's going to be reflected in your sound. So a clear open sound is going to be the sound that you get on one of those peaks. When you get off of those peaks, the sound starts to sound closed. And it sounds closed because the horn doesn't really want to open up there and shine. You're fighting, you're fighting the horn itself when you're playing sharp or flat. So when you play and you practice, if you listen very critically and you make sure each and every note has its best sound and each and every note is as easy to play as possible because you are fighting the horn when you are not playing in one of those peaks, you will tend to play centered and you will have a great tone. And then moving the peaks around just involves a, a pull or a push of the slide. Um, please leave a message in the chat if that's not, not clear. Um, or if you just want to talk about anything else. Um, with, as with all my live streams, I like to keep this as an open conversation. So if anyone has any questions about horns, mouthpieces, the bias system, etc. Um, just let me know. Uh, the software and the hardware combined for this was a little shy of $10,000. So it's not exactly the kind of thing you can just go out and buy and keep just out of, out of curiosity. But we have it uh, partially out of curiosity, but we've also used it to help develop our various line of horns and our, and our various mouthpieces. Um, it was especially useful in our new Varus KX model in uh, designing the lead pipe that uh, goes on that instrument. 
let's talk a little bit about oh and by the way if I show this impedance curve versus the one I took with the incorrect hand position oops wrong button you can see how everything has changed Let's take a look at pulse response. So the chart here will basically tell you how, in a way it tells you how well the horn was made. Because if there are any sharp jumps or dips in this line, it means that there's some sort of obstruction in the horn or a solder joint wasn't put together well or basically something is sticking out into the horn that shouldn't be. Uh, we try to bias test all of our various horns to as part of our quality control measures to make sure that you're not getting any horns that have any major issues. But of course this is a Finca and it, um, it is made great because Johannes makes great horns. Uh, I'm gonna draw your attention to this number here. This is uh, the pulse response factor. And a very, very simplified way of saying it, this tells you how much energy it took before the metal started to respond. So this will this measures the responsiveness of the horn when playing. The higher that number is, the more responsive the horn will feel. That means you have to put less energy into the horn before it starts to go. Let's compare this with another horn that I tested out before the live stream today. Oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't switch back to the screen for all of that. This is the pulse response chart. So again, um, Finca makes great horns and you see there are no big dips or raises in the chart here, which means that um, there, are, there are no abnormal obstructions in the horn. This dip represents the beginning of the horn. So this would be the mouthpiece and it continues on to this dip, which is the bell. So uh, really interesting, not really useful to any of you, but you can tell the exact acoustic length of this instrument. So you can see the acoustic length of this instrument is, oops, the acoustic length of this instrument is roughly 375 centimeters. So there we go. Yep. So this roughly 374.7 centimeters. I don't know about you, but to me, it's kind of amazing that uh, uh, this acoustic device, this head can actually measure the length of the instrument. And this is the pulse response factor I was pointing you out to, which is 33.2%. And the higher this number is, the more responsive the horn is. Comparing this to another horn I tested earlier, this is an LDX-5 Rhenish Anniversary Edition. So by the way, in case every time I show this horn, I have a few of the same questions. The Rhenish model is a model that's exclusive to Houghton Horns. It utilizes long solder joints on the F branch and the lead pipe, uh, and that creates a horn with uh, more depth in sound. Uh, it will be a little bit more resistant than the standard model LDX-5, but it's more resistant in a good way. It means that you have to put less energy into the horn to get a great sound, so you, so instead of blowing more, it 
it feels more free blowing, but really you're just wasting more energy and more air. This, in our opinion, plays more efficiently and sounds better. And anniversary edition reflects some changes that um, that Dietmar Dirk made um, at the anniversary of the horn. But taking a look at the pulse response chart again. Again, this is the pulse response of the Finca Westphalia. And let's compare it to the LDX-5. Okay, so we'll notice here, the Finca had the pulse response of 33.2%. That means the Dirk is gonna feel ever so slightly less responsive on the F open horn. Let's take a look at the B flat open horn. First thing to point out is the pulse response factor is much higher because it will always be higher on the B flat horn because the B flat horn is shorter and thus more responsive. Uh, plotting the Westphalia compared to the LDX-5 here, you'll notice again, neither one has any big, um, big problems with obstructions or anything inside the instrument. But we'll see the Westphalia again had, will, feel, will feel more responsive than the, than the LDX-5. Now, if we plot the impedance of these together, it, yeah, that's not the right one. If we plot the imp impedance of these horns together, that's the LDX5, so blue is the LDX5. Okay, so even though the Westphalia is gonna feel more responsive, the LDX-5 gonna say in general, except for a few of these higher notes, has higher impedance. That means that the LDX-5 is going to feel slot here and it's going to, um, so it's, it's just gonna feel more slotty and each each one of the notes is going to, um, you'll get more energy. You'll get more energy out of each note from centering it. Let me see if we have any questions so far. Have you done this with the Yamaha 871? I have not measured the Yamaha 871 yet. Though we have one in stock right now, shockingly. So... I, I thank you for reminding me. I'll need to go ahead and do this with the with the Yamaha 871. Take let me take a look at Facebook. No comments on Facebook. Now let me turn off. Okay, yeah, no live chat. Okay, and I see quite a few of you are are watching. Thank you very much. I know this is not the most, I know this is not the most exciting topic in the world, but thank you for joining in. Um, and let's take a look at the intonation tendencies of each horn comparatively. So I'll start off with the LDX-5 again so that the LDX-5 continues to have the same color. So. The LDX-5 is going to be blue. And the Westphalia will be red. And so we have some big differences here. Make sure yeah, these, these line up. 
So this is how you would read the pitches in the key of F. So high C is always sharp on every single horn. On the LDX5, it's 17 cent sharp on, oh, back to the screen here. On the LDX5, high C is 17 cent sharp. It's in blue. And the Westphalia, which is in red, is 18 cent sharp. Uh, so if you have a really sharp high C, just you can join the club. Um, a here on the open F horn is a little flat. Again, that's uh, that's pretty standard, and it's a little flat on both horns. F at the top of the staff. So here we get a bit of a difference. So the LDX5 is two cents flat, while the uh, Westphalia is nine cents sharp at F on the top of the staff. And then we have third space C here, which is quite flat on the LDX5. And it is um, right in tune on the Westphalia. So that, I, before you take that and you, you, you write home saying, oh look, the LDX5 has a really bad note, really bad standard note. I would need to test this horn one more time before before really um, before really being concerned about that. But yeah, that's that's quite flat for third space C on the open B flat horn. Um, no one plays A on the open B flat horn and that's why. <laughs> um, and an F at the bottom of the staff on the on the open B flat horn. We have the Westphalia, which is five cents sharp in the uh, LDX five, which is four cents flat. And one more comparison before I sign off for today. Uh, usually I try to make these an hour. Today I only have 30 minutes because I've got to get to a meeting. As we know, meetings, so fun. We'll do the LDX5 first. And then um, the Westphalia. So open F horn and the notes we would play in the open F horn. Low C is six cents flat on both horns. Again, if you've played that note, you know it tends to it tends to be flat. The LDX5 is a little sharp on G, while the um, Westphalia is a little flat. E in the staff, it's a bit flat on the LDX5, 20 cents flat, versus um, 8 cents flat on the um, on the Westphalia. Um, I try to avoid that. As I mentioned before, I try to avoid that note in general. Um, C at the bottom of the staff. LDX5 is perfectly in tune, which is why you don't see a bar here. It means it's at zero. And the Westphalia is three cents flat. And G, the LDX5 is perfectly in tune. And the Westphalia is, is five cents flat. So I still have multiple viewers for this. Shocking. <laughs> That's... All I have today, this is just a basic introduction to, um, to the bias system and what it can do. On many of the horns that we have on our website, we post these charts so that you can see the impedance and the pulse response and the intonation. Um, although it's not at all a replacement for getting your hands on a horn and playing it, we feel it helps you to, it can help you to make a decision, especially if you don't have the ability to come to our shop and you need to uh, narrow down the instrument, you know, the instrument that you would like sent out on trial. Uh, I see I have no other questions. Uh, I will be giving this talk. This was kind of a practice run for uh, a talk I'm giving at KBHC tonight. 
during a session with an evening with Houghton Horns. It'll be me, Dennis Houghton, and Karen Houghton. Uh, Dennis Houghton will be talking about some repair techniques from his bench in the shop. I'll be talking about horn acoustics. And uh, Karen will be talking some practical advice about pedagogy and managing your studio. Um, I have some years of experience with this. They have dozens of years of experience in their field, so it should be a great talk. Uh, as with everything we do, we try not to make it commercial, so it is an educational talk. Uh, and we'll see you tonight. Bye.